Señoras y señores, Ladies and gentlemen, shareholders, good morning, everybody. First, I would like to thank you for your trust in Telefónica, which you make clear with your attendance at this general shareholders meeting through the channels for remote attendance. These channels have been activated this year in view of the situation arising from COVID-19 in order to offer our shareholders all appropriate means for the exercise of your right. Let's begin the meeting. I would like to inform all attendees that pursuant to the Companies Act, the Board of Directors has requested that Mr. José Miguel García Lombardía, notary of the Association of Public Notaries of Madrid, be present to certify the minutes of this meeting. Mr. García Lombardía is present in this room. The Secretary has the floor. Good morning. Further in compliance with the legal formalities to be observed, we hereby state for the record that in Madrid at 11 a.m. on June 12, 2020, at the offices of Telefónica SA, located at Distrito Telefónica Ronda de la Comunicación, as an auditorio del editorio central, there is a meeting on second call of the presiding committee of the ordinary general shareholders meeting of Telefónica Sociedad Anónima called by the resolution of the Board of Directors dated May 6, 2020, by means of the communication of other relevant information published on May the 7th, 2020, on the website of the Spanish National Stock Market Commission and on the company's website and by means of announcements published on May 8th in the newspapers El País and Expansión in which all the matters submitted to the shareholders for approval at this meeting are listed. In addition, by means of a notice of other relevant information published on June 4th, 2020, on the website of the Spanish National Stock Market Commission and on the website of the company and by means of the announcements published on June 5th, 2020 in the newspapers El País and Expansión, the pu company published a supplemental announcement reporting that as a consequence of the crisis arising from COVID-19 and in order to protect the interests of the community at large and the health of the shareholders, employees and other persons who participate in the preparation and holding of this general meeting, the meeting would be held without the physical or in-person presence of shareholders, representatives or guests. The presiding committee of the general shareholders meeting is made up of Mr. Jose Maria Alvarez Payete Lopez, chairman of the meeting in his capacity as chairman of the board of directors, and myself, Mr. Pablo de Carvajal Gonzalez, secretary for the meeting in my capacity as secretary of the board of directors, both being currently in office and with our positions recorded with the commercial registry. Mr. Angel Villa Boix, chief operating officer of the company, is also physically present at this shareholders meeting, while the other directors of the company attend via electronic means. As regards the quorum for this meeting, and as stated in the announcement of the call to meeting and on the corporate website, the process of registration for remote attendance at this meeting ended at 9 a.m. today, June the 12th, which, together with the result of the calculation of the distance votes cast and the proxies granted, allow us to determine that there is a sufficient quorum to validly hold the ordinary general shareholders meeting on second call, which can therefore begin. The final information of the shareholder attendance at this general meeting has been prepared by an entity external to Telefónica Sociedad Anónima, namely the well-known firm Indra SA, which has performed the review and analysis of the remote attendance, the distance votes and the proxies, which are also available to those shareholders wishing to review them, and which has delivered to us the final data with the following result. 2,519 shareholders present, holding 104,463,287 shares. 22,082 shareholders represented by proxy of 2,727,162,773 shares. In total, shareholders attend that are present or represented by proxy I apologize 24,601 shareholders which are owners of 2,831,626,050 shares of that represent 54,54% of share capital in the company uh, Telefonica SA. The share capital of the company is of 
five billion one hundred and ninety two million one hundred and thirty one thousand six hundred and eighty six uh, in the total number of shares. So there is sufficient quorum for this ordinary share general shareholders meeting to be validly held on second call and for the discussion of the matters included on the agenda. In view of the information provided by the Secretary, I hereby declare a valid quorum to exi exist for the ordinary general shareholders meeting on the second call. The notary has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen shareholders, in compliance with the provisions of commercial law, I hereby ask the attendees whether they have any reservations or protests with respect to the statements regarding the number of shareholders attending the meeting and the capital present and represented by proxy. If there are any, you can report them to me now using the remote attendance application. Thank you very much. We'll just wait a couple of seconds to see whether there are any reservations. There are no reservations. Thank you. There being no objections of any kind to the motor matter raised by the notary, I confirm that the general shareholders meeting of Telefonica Sociedad Anonima is validly established on second call in order for the shareholders to discuss and decide all the matters included on the agenda. The secretary has the floor once again. The resolutions proposed by the Board of Directors are included in the documentation that has been available to you since the date of the call to the general meeting, both on the website and at the registered office of the company. The shareholders are reminded that the full text of the proposed resolution submitted to a vote is available to them in the application for remote attendance at the meeting. Moreover, pursuant to applicable legal provisions, the shareholders at this general shareholders meeting must be informed of the following matters. First, information must be provided regarding the amendment of Articles 20 and 25 of the regulations of the Board of Directors of the company, which was approved by the Board of Directors at its meeting held on the December 18, 2019, and recorded at the Madrid Commercial Registry on January 28, 2020. The main purpose of such amendment was to adapt the current organizational structure of the committees of the Board of Directors, and it consisted of Firstly, issues regarding reputation, corporate responsibility and sustainability until then within the purview of the Regulation and Institutional Affairs Committee becoming the purview of the Service Quality and Customer Service Committee. And secondly, changing the name of the Service Quality and Customer Service Committee, which was renamed the Sustainability and Quality Committee. The text resulting from the amendment is available to you on the company's corporate website. Second, we must inform you about the company's annual corporate governance report for fiscal year 2019, which has been prepared in accordance with the regulations established by the Spanish National Stock Market Commission and which has been included in the management reports that are attached to both the individual annual accounts of Telefonica and the accounts of its consolidated group, all of them for fiscal year 2019. In the aforementioned annual corporate governance report, which this year has for the first time been prepared without following a standardized format, the company provides detailed information regarding various matters related to its corporate governance, including the following. The ownership structure of the company, the rules governing the conduct of the general shareholders meeting, the management structure of the company, detailed information regarding related party transactions and intergroup transactions, the risk of control and management systems that the company has established the internal risk control and management systems regarding the financial information reporting process and the level of compliance with corporate governance recommendations. This annual corporate governance report was registered with the Spanish National Stock Market Commission on February 20th, 2020 and has been available since then on the website of our company. At this point, I give the floor to the chairman in order for him to report on the company's corporate governance and, in particular, on the company's level of compliance with the recommendations and the good governance called, code. Sorry. As set out in the annual corporate governance report for fiscal year 2019, Telefonica complies with practically all of the recommendations of the good governance code with the following provi provi provisos. 
Firstly, the Board of Directors of Telefonica is convinced that the limit on the maximum number of votes that a single shareholder may cast, 10% of the total share capital, as stated in Article 26 of the bylaws, is an effective tool to protect the interests of all minority shareholders. The com secondly, the complexity of the organisational structure of the Telefonica Group and the wide variety of sectors in which it carries out its activities justify the number of 17 members on its board of directors. Thirdly, Telefonica SA is one of the largest companies listed on the Spanish stock exchanges by market capitalisation and has shareholders with large holdings in absolute value terms, which is the reason why, in terms of proprietary directors, Telefonica cannot adhere to strict proportionality criteria when determining the composition of its board. Fourthly, with respect to the participation structure of the different categories of directors, it should be pointed out that the percentage of independent directors is higher on the Board of Directors than on the Executive Commission, mainly due to the reclassification in 2018 and 2019 of two of the members of the Executive Commission who came to be considered other external upon having completed 12 years in office as directors of the company. The company has considered that this change in the classification of two of the members of the Commission due to the mere passage of time does not justify in and of itself a change in the composition of the Executive Commission. Fifthly, the Nominating Compensation and Corporate Governance Committee is a single body and to date there has been no discussion of splitting it up in order to favour coordination and ensure that it continues to work efficiently. Sixthly, in addition, the Audit and Control Committee and the Appointments, Compensation and Corporate Governance Committee are chaired by independent directors. Both the aforementioned committees are the other committees whose purview covers as matters related to the company's business and management issues, including the external proprietary directors, in order for them to contribute their technical knowledge and specific experience. Seven, as can be seen in the company's public information, the directors and officers held very significant interest in the capital of Telefonica SA as of December 31, 2019, which shows their commitment to Telefonica and the alignment of their interests with those of the shareholders. Additionally, the policy on remuneration of directors approved by the shareholders at the share general shareholders meeting held on June 8, 2018, includes the commitment of the executive directors to maintain a number of shares equal to two payments of annual gross fixed remuneration for so long as they have such status. Eight. Moreover, the Nominating Compensation and Corporate Governance Committee has the power to propose to the Board of Directors the cancellation of the payment of variable compensation if such payment has not been in line with performance criteria of, or if such compensation has been paid based on data that are subsequently proven to be incorrect. Nine. The company also continues to move forward along the path of adjusting its severance payments policy to the recommendations of the Good Governance Code. However, the terms and conditions in the contracts with the current executive directors are the same as those in their previous contracts upon the terms described in the annual corporate governance report. Last. Notice is given of the annual report on remuneration of directors of Telefonica for fiscal year 2019 the text of which has been made available to the shareholders from the date of the call to meeting and which was prepared and approved by the board of the company at its meeting on February 19, 2020, in accordance with the proposal made by the Nominating Compensation and Corporate Governance Committee. Finally, you are hereby notified that the full written text of the report of the chairman will now present at this ordinary general shareholders meeting will be published on the website and made available to the shareholders. Dear shareholders, it's been three months since confinement uh, uh, was announced for everybody, public companies, institutions, private companies. Uh, something happened that had never crossed our minds. And as from that date onwards, we have lived new situations, unexpected situations that nothing had been rehearsed for. And we began to... to uh, um, suffer vertigo because we had never been able to... Um, have to give up this physical um, closeness and we've had to, had to innovate and we've discovered a lot of things about ourselves, the community we make up, uh, employees, shareholders, suppliers, customers, and also about our company and the social role we carry out. And we have reached an undeniable conclusion and that is that Telefonica has a, hu a huge role. 
our company is coming close to its 100th anniversary and uh, in, there was a pandemic called the Spanish flu in 1918 and it infected 500 million people and uh, took three times more lives than the First World War. But the difference between the world a century ago and today's world are many. The means of transport used then was uh, horses, illiteracy was um, amongst half of the population, and communication uh, was through the written press. But only one out of every thousand Spaniards had a telephone line. Nevertheless, the measures that were adopted to fight against that pandemic are, are very familiar to us. P personal hygiene, face masks, social distancing, closing of schools and markets, confinement in the home. So the difference between 1918 and 2020 lies in the medical field, but also essentially in the digital revolution and that of telecommunications. Throughout last m March, the world came to a stop. Transport uh, stopped, uh, factories stopped, streets emptied, shops, cinemas, schools, offices all closed their doors. Half of humanity sh shut themselves away at home. And it was similar to what happened 100 years ago, but the biggest difference lies in what happened after that. A century ago, life came to a standstill, but in 2020, life has continued, and one has gone from the physical space to the virtual world. In 1918, uh, shops and cinemas closed their doors, but uh, in 2020, video platforms have uh, grown exponentially, and uh, there has been huge growth. In 1918, most shops had to close their doors, but in 2020, electronic commerce has grown only in the first month by 50% in the first month of confinement. In 1918, many people had to risk their lives and continue to work. In 2020, teleworking has become the normal way of carrying out many activities and has multiplied by seven in Spain. In 1918, T uh, cl schools close their doors. In 2020, students have maintained a link with their teachers through distance learning, which was just exceptional until now. In 1918, many personal contacts were interrupted, but, uh, and others were at risk of contagion. But in 2020, family friends and friend, uh, and members, family members and friends have been able to keep in touch through video conferences. Traffic has multiplied by six on our channels. And naturally, this movement in 2020 has had an immediate reflect in the traffic that goes through our networks. We talk about growth in a week that has been mo more than in the whole of 2019, and our networks have surpassed this or passed this exam with f flying colours. What was the first response of Telefonica amongst all this commotion? Well, precisely, it was to maintain communications up and running. Telefonica has become the support that has kept business, cultural, educational, and labor activities going. And even our health response uh, has also used our networks. When the pandemic threatened to paralyze life, as it did in 1918, the telecommunication networks have prevented this from happening. At a time when society was looking for reference or benchmarks, it has found it in health workers, police, military people, and certainly in communications. We have been able to do this because we have had networks that have shown they are robust and have behaved with total stability and uh, security. And thanks mainly to our people, the Telefonica people. We have made our world more human, connecting people's lives. Our mission has become something vital for the whole of society, and we have been able to do this. And without the company, without its shareholders, without our employees, without Telefonica, everything would have been different. Everything would have been worse. We have been able to maintain the telecommunications, and that was our first response, but not the only response, because in those first few weeks, we continued to n help our stakeholders in all markets. Our priority, once again, were people, our team. We chose to make 95% of our team telework. Right from the start, we have wanted 
that those who have needed us, want, we wanted them to feel close to the whole of the Telefonica community. And in these difficult weeks, the professional link has been maintained and the emotional one was strengthened. Unfortunately, we have lost nine colleagues. We will never forget them. And from here, we would like to send out all of our support to their family members. In addition, we want to soften out the confinement of our customers, adding more volume of data and more entertainment at no additional cost. We have had a more human response than ever, and we have um, helped our suppliers in terms of liquidity. We've treated them like our partners, and we have always kept in mind our millions of shareholders. Every minute b b that we met our mission. Every day we looked after the value of the, their company and we wanted to fulfill our expectations because they consider the dividend as part of their income and we want to maintain this at 40 cents of a euro per share. In general, we have wanted to be useful for the whole of society. We have made available to administration and the health system our technical know-how, our human resources and all our resources, wherever these were necessary. We have a fund of 25 million euros to purchase health material. We've bought uh, tablets and uh, mobile lines, and we have allowed our O2 arena in London and the O2 uh, tower in Munich. We've made this available, and uh, we have uh, worked through the Telefonica Foundation. And we've looked to see how we could help, and we have helped. And we felt we could do more, and we did do more. We know that the raison d'etre of a company is to serve the whole community as it is part of. And thanks to the clarity of our mission and our values, this crisis has brought out the best in Telefonica. Never had our purpose had more meaning to it. If we ask what the biggest historic event was in 2020, nobody will mention the Spanish flu of 1918, but the world changed in many respects. Something similar will happen with COVID-19 because we are aware of the fact that we will learn from this crisis. First of all, we have to be humble to recognize the fact that we're not immune to extraordinary events, that not everything can be predicted, that there are times where there's no manual or prior experiences that can guide us, and that there are fights where the values are the only guide we have. Secondly, that telecommunications have confirm themselves to be a vital sector in modern societies. Telecommunication companies are the backbone of our society, and they can only comply with their role if they have the best networks. And this confirms the right thing we did with more than 90 million uh, billion euros invested since 2012, which has helped us to face up to this situation from the best possible situation. We tend to remind people that Spain is the leading country in Europe and third in the OECD with most fiber in rural areas uh, than the average of urban areas in Europe. And the mobile network has 4G coverage close to 100%. These figures express the robustness of our country and our company. And this has become essential now. Thirdly, that digitization it cannot be, is unstoppable. There are so many lives and jobs that have been saved due to the connectivity and technology. But we all know that a scenario such as this would not have been sustainable without it. In a few weeks of lockdown, societies have made more progress uh, technologically than in any other time. And it's not only this technological offering, but society and companies that are leading and are demanding this change. We have lost our fright to teleworking or buying or relating to each other online. We celebrate birthdays, visit museums, and we hold AGMs in a virtual fashion, something we never dared do before this pandemic. Public organizations, business organizations, and millions of people have found out that there are solutions in the digital world for the biggest challenges out there. Big data with artificial intelligence helped to prevent uh, uh, outbreaks and to diagnose uh, diseases. Robotics, too, and autonomous vehicles and drones have been essential in the disinfection process. And likewise, there's a long list of other examples.
Fourth, digital progress goes hand in hand with challenges. If COVID-19 has accelerated digitization, it has also underlined the risks that come hand in hand that require a new type of governance. Health systems have had cyber security attacks on phishing. It shows it's very important for data to be protected and for there to be privacy in this new digital era. The absence of devices and educational platforms or a lack of knowledge are causing an increase in this educational gap in some areas and territories. The asymmetry in the use of data can cause inequalities too. If we do nothing, then difficulties will become worse. We have to guarantee that most of the population has access to technologies and opportunities that uh, are offered by a new digital world. The inequality of opportunities is the big, biggest challenge we face up to. And it is these things precisely that the Telefonica Manifesto for a new digital agreement underlined, putting people at the center of things. This new digital agreement required dialogue between governments and uh, civil society and uh, companies to better the lives of people, to foster training and education. And this means adopting very urgently the educational system, adapting the educational system to the new digital world and always remembering values and the importance of digital or the, or the rights, people's rights. Fifthly, this health crisis has given us an indirect learning, and we have seen how the life of the whole of humanity can be interrupted by a phenomenon that is out of control. We have fully understood what a crisis of this represents, and it has encouraged us to act as soon as possible against climate change, where digitization is a very important part of the solution. Because, to tell you the truth, the sector emits very few emissions, and digital technology can reduce by more than a third emissions in the next 10 years. In addition, in this point, Telefonica can sh offer a great series of services. 80% of energies that we use are from renewable energies, and this will, is 100, will be 100% in Europe and Brazil. And we avoid 3.3 times of emissions that are generated, and uh, equivalent uh, of uh, what is absorbed by millions of trees. The future, therefore, has shown that mobility can be reduced uh, greatly for a long period of time, but we wouldn't be able to reduce the same amount in telecommunications. Digitalization, together with sustainability, is the engine for reactivation of our economy and optimizing costs, opening new sources of income, and adapting our systems. It is estimated that the digital reinvention could have a yearly impact of 1.8% of GDP up to 2025, fostering digitization using technologies such as cloud, cybersecurity, big data, Internet of Things, will increase competitiveness, stimulating growth and jobs. And this is particularly relevant in the case of SMEs because of their great weighting in the Spanish economy and because of the low level of digitalization. And for this reason, it's so important to inc include in the digital pact the support uh, towards these SMEs in their digitalization process. Now, if we've learned anything from this crisis, that digital infrastructures are basic. We found that having the most important fiber network in Europe is absolutely essential in crucial moments like these. 2020 will go down in the history of our company. Will go down that we that it, as the year that we passed the test and that we started our action plan to build the new Telefonica that we started last year. Then we announced five strategic decisions to generate value and a positive impact over the long term in uh, the whole company to grow and be more efficient in a sustainable fashion. First, we decided to prioritize Spain, Brazil, Germany, and the UK as the key markets where we have four very important operators. We've reinforced our presence in those markets and made a big effort to improve the customer experience on the ultra broadband. And these are big markets that represent four fifths of our revenues. Secondly, we 
segregated our businesses in Central America with a new organization and dedicated team looking for strategic alternatives to maintain a profitable, profitable presence in the region. Thirdly, we formed Telefonica Tech to be a world leader in digital services B2B, cybersecurity, cloud, and big data, Internet of Things, for example. And we provided cutting-edge digital services, which in 2019 grew by nearly 30 percent. Fourth, we agreed the creation of Telefonica Infra, one of the most important infrastructure companies in the world. And to really see the value of, uh, of, our, of our assets here. Fifth, we implemented a new operational model to maximize synergies to be more agile in all of Telefonica's units. Now, just six months later, and despite these exceptional circumstances, we've made great progress in all five areas. We are now managing the businesses in Latin America with an independent uh, unit, and we've advanced to be prepared for financial separation there. In Telefonica Tech, we've signed important strategic agreements for cloud cybersecurity with Microsoft and Google, and one more year were recognized externally as the leaders in all business areas of this new unit. Also, we're moving forward in the segregation of businesses with 90% growth in cybersecurity and cloud internet and the Internet of Things, our revenues are growing at a pace of, of two digits. Also, Telefonica Infra has many different infrastructure projects and we're moving forward with our tower portfolio. So the agreement just three days ago signed for 10,000 uh, sites in Telefonica Deutschland was an important part of this growth. And Telsius, its main asset, uh, is doubling its size. We're capturing important efficiencies with digitization and simplification in all of our countries, and we're, our operational margin is increasing in the right direction. But where we've made the biggest progress is in the strengthening of our position in one of our four main markets in the UK. The agreement with Liberty Global created a leader converging operator, the champion of connectivity in the UK. It makes us leaders <coughs> with a cutting edge company with our customers there, Telefonica, then is convergent in all four of its key markets, in Spain, in the UK with its own infrastructure, and in Germany with agreements with third parties. <coughs> the combination of both companies makes us stronger and the second biggest market in Europe. Also, the integration of the two companies allows us to capture very important synergies. This operation was the biggest consolidation operation in Europe in telecommunications in years, and the biggest by Telefonica in its nearly 100-year history. And so we're very proud to say that we've executed this during a very difficult situation of confinement. Now, the results of 2019 are also an important achievement and are the result of the changes that we announced last year. First, our transformation has allowed us to consolidate sustained growth and growth, grow simultane simultaneously in the important financial areas for the seventh straight year. In 2019, in organic terms, we grew in revenues above 3%, around 2% in uh, operational results and in net profits more than 3.5 billion. This th this is a somewhat down but that was a deliberate decision to be able to do our restructuring to carry out our action plan. Secondly, we grew in cash flow generation and in a unique way we've 
invested 8.8 .8 billion to continue to have the best platforms while other operators are making big investments to roll out technologies that we already have but we we have already we have already done that in telefonica so this volume of investment has not prevented us from reaching cash flow generation the highest cash flow generation uh, figure almost six billion in this in 2019 thirdly we continue to reduce debt in a significant way in fact we've reduced net debt in 15 billion euros since june 2016 we're allocating capital in a in a more in a better fashion and we're solid and more solid in, with the credit agencies we complied with our financial uh, goals and we also advanced in the non-financial uh, goals as well we're growing in a sustainable inclusive fashion using the latest technologies we're advancing in our commitment with the environment and we're helping to decarbonize the economy with our digital solutions and our fiber networks Telefonica has once again recognized globally due to its fight against climate change we are a benchmark in efficiency moving forward in digitization to offering a simple and digital experience to our customers, re reinforcing our corporate governance, renewing 65% of the board over the last several years. And for the first time in our history, we have 30% women on our board. We're reaching high levels of c customer satisfaction and employee satisfaction. And the most admired telecom company in Europe and with our governance and environmental policies. So in short, we are the driving force behind social progression. In 2019, our activity had an impact on GDP of more than 52 billion, and we generated 1.1 million jobs, and we paid taxes in the amount of nearly 9 billion euros. Also, despite uncertainty and distorted markets, we're not immune to those situations, but our business is more resistant than others. We are certain that with the execution of our action plan, we are moving forward in the right direction, generating a value, and that this will be reflected in the share price. This year, 2020, our objective is to optimize a cash flow generation, and we have a solid balance sheet and a strong liquidity to deal with the ups and downs of the crisis. We'll continue investing and reducing debt and we'll continue to maintain an attractive and sustainable dividend. Three months ago now, something happened that no one in the world and no one in Telefonica wanted to happen. The 13th of March, many things changed, but many other things started to function the transforming energy of a leading company was put in place and our capacity for work in adverse conditions was proven and we proved that Telefonica is ready for these huge challenges. The quality of our, gov our corporate governance improved and our, the workings of our board and especially we reinforced the link that the owners of this company, the shareholders, have with our company. Before this emergency, we had trust in the future of the company. But now, now we are absolutely sure that we'll be able to overcome any test, no matter how difficult. We calculate our, calculated our strength, and now we know that we have the strength to overcome these issues. Before this world emergency, we made a distinction between the digital life and the physical life, but now in Telefonica we see that there is there are no longer two lives. We have one, only one life, and it goes through our networks, not just voice and data, but life itself goes through our networks, and we've helped life to move forward during the crisis. This GSM is held for the first time telematically, but these networks rolled out by Telefonica, this virtual life, I wanted to use it to thank you and express my pride to form part of this fantastic company. Thank you very much.
As regards the voting process on the proposed resolution submitted to the shareholders for approval at this general meeting, please note that in, in order for public solicitations for proxy representation to be effective, those directors who might be affected by a potential conflict of interest will cast their vote in accordance with the specific instructions given by the shareholder they represent. If the shareholder being represented has not given specific instructions or if the instructions given are ambiguous, then the director will not exercise the right to vote attaching to the shares represented thereby, and it will be for the secretary for the general meeting to exercise the right to vote attaching to such shares. In addition, as stated in the announcement of the call to meeting on the corporate website, Shareholders or the representatives attending this general meeting remotely have been able to cast their vote on the proposals regarding items included on the agenda from the time that the chairman declared the meeting to be validly established. Now, in any event, the process of voting regarding all of the proposals submitted to the meeting will end after the summaries of such proposed resolutions have been read aloud. Now, the proposed resolutions, those on the agenda, we could, we don't have to read the, the entire proposals. If the text was facilitated to the shareholders at the beginning of the general meeting, as was the case, as is because they were available in the application uh, to this meeting. Therefore, I will only provide to make things go faster, I'll just talk about the most important content of these um, resolutions. The full text that you can have through the application will be incorporated into the notarized meetings and uh, minutes of the meeting. First, the approval of the individual and consolidated annual accounts and management reports, the consolidation non-financial information, and the management of the board of directors. 1.1, approval of the annual accounts and of the management report of both Telefonica SA and its consolidated group of companies. It is proposed to approve the individual annual accounts, the consolidated financial statements, and the management reports of Telefonica Sociedad Anonima and its consolidated group of companies for fiscal year 2019 as formulated by the company's board of directors at its meeting of February 19, 2020. 1.2, approval of the statement of non-financial information of the consolidated group of companies. It is proposed to approve the statement of non-financial information of the consolidated group of companies led by Telefonica SA for fiscal year 2019, included in the consolidated management report of Telefonica SA and its group of companies for such fiscal year. 1.3, approval of the management of the Board of Directors. It is also proposed to approve the corporate management carried out by the Board of Directors of Telefonica Sociedad Anonima during fiscal year 2019. 2. Approval of the proposed allocation of profits losses. It is also proposed to approve the proposed allocation of the profit losses of Tele Telefonica for fiscal year 2019 allocating the profits obtained in the amount of $5,740,303,860.06 to voluntary reserves. Re-election of the statu statutory auditor for fiscal year 2020. It is proposed pursuant to the proposed proposal made by the Audit and Control Com Committee with which the Board of Directors concurs to re-elect the firm Price Waterhouse Coopers. Auditors SL as statu statutory auditor of Telefonica Sociedad Anonima and its consolidated group of companies in this fiscal year 2020 for re election, ratification, and appointment of directors. 4 1 re elect Mr. Isidro Fainé Casas with the classification of propriety director for a new four year period. 4 2 re elect Juan Ignacio Serac Sastorain with the classification of independent director for a new four-year period. 4.3, re-elect Mr. Jose Javier Echeneque Landibar with the classification of independent director for a new four-year period. 1.4, to re-elect Mr. Peter Erskine with the classification of other external director for a new four-year period. 1.5, to re-elect Ms. Sabina Fluxa Thainman 
with a classification of independent director for a new four-year period. 4.6, to elect Mr. Peter Luster with a classification of independent director for a new four-year period. 4.7, to ratify the interim appointment of Ms. Veronica Maria Pascual Boy, approved by the Board of Directors, and to appoint her as director for a new four-year period with the classification of independent director. 4.8, ratify the interim appointment of Ms. Claudia Sender Ramirez, approved by the Board of Directors, and to appoint her as director for a four-year period with the classification of independent director. 5. Shareholder compensation by means of script dividends. Two proposals for shareholder compensation by means of script dividends are submitted to the shareholders at this general meeting. For such purpose, there are proposed two increases in share capital with a change to reserves by such amount as may be determined pursuant to the terms and conditions of the proposals through the issuance of new ordinary shares and without additional paid-in capital. Such such shares being of the same class and series as those currently outstanding and with a provision of incomplete allocation in order to offer the shareholders the option to receive paid up shares as the compensation corresponding to the second payment contemplated in the compensation policy for fiscal year 2019 and to the first payment contemplated in the compensation policy for fiscal year 2020. Six, delegation to the board of directors of the power to increase share capital. It is proposed that the shareholders at the general meeting authorize the board of directors so that Pursuant to the provisions of Section 297.1b of the Companies Act, it may increase their share capital on one or more occasions and at any time within the term of five years as from the date of approval of this resolution by the maximum nominal amount of €2,596,065,843 equal to one half of the company's capital on the date of the approval of this resolution. Pursuant to this delegation, the capital increases will be carried out by means of the issuances and flotation of new shares, with or without additional paid in capital, the consideration for which will consist of cash contributions with the Board of Directors having the power to decide how increases would be implemented and the express provision being made for the possibility of incomplete subscription. In relation to the capital increases that are carried out pursuant to this delegation, it is proposed to de delegate to the Board of Directors the power to totally or partially exclude preemptive rights as provided in Section 506 of the Companies Act, with the power to exclude said rights being limited to 20% of the company's share capital on the date of approval of this resolution. 7. Delegation to the Board of the Power to Issue Securities. It is proposed to the shareholders at the general meeting to approve the delegation to the Board of Directors in accordance with the general rules governing the issuance of debentures and pursuant to the provision of applicable law and the company's bylaws of the power to issue fixed income securities or similar debt instruments or hybrid financial instruments which may be convertible into and or exchangeable for shares and or giving the holders thereof a share in the earnings of the company and to guarantee the issuance thereof in accordance with the terms and conditions set forth in the proposed resolution. It is further proposed to authorize the Board of Directors to turn to in turn delegate to the Executive Committee the powers granted in this resolution. 8. Delegation of Powers it is proved to the shareholders at the General Shareholders Meeting to authorize the Executive Chairman of the Board of Directors, the Chief Operating Officer, the Secretary of the Board of Directors, and the Deputy Secretary of the Board of Directors, in order that any of them, acting severally, may formalize and implement the foregoing resolutions. 9. Consultative vote on the annual report on director remuneration. It is proposed to the shareholders at this general shareholders meeting to approve on a consult consultative basis the annual report on director remuneration for fiscal year 2019, the text of which has been made available to the shareholders from the date of the call of the meeting. The shareholders are reminded that the full text of the proposed resolutions is available to them in the application for remote attendance at the meeting. Now, the reading of the summaries, having read these uh, resolutions, the voting has come to a close. Everyone has made their votes in terms of these resolutions included on the agenda. 
Also, additionally, as stated in the announcement of the call to this general shareholders meeting, those shareholders are the representatives who, in the exercise of their rights, have desired to make presentations at this meeting and, if applicable, to request information or clarification regarding the items on the agenda or to request clarifications regarding information accessible to the public that has been provided by the company to the Spanish National Stock Market Commission since the holding of the last general meeting or regarding the auditor's report or three to make proposals in the cases allowed by law have been able to do so from the time they logged into the remote attendance platform using the presentation from available for such purposes. Thus, remote attendees have been able to submit and send their presentation questions in writing until the chairman declared this meeting validly established. The shareholders or the representatives attending remotely have also been able to express their desire for the representation to be recorded in the minutes of the meeting. I now proceed to read a summary of the issues raised by the shareholders, grouping them by subject in those cases where appropriate, and the chairman will then provide the appropriate responses. In any event, pursuant to Section 182 of the Companies Act, requests for information or clarification made by remote attendance will be answered in writing within seven days of the conclusion of this meeting. So in this respect, the shareholders with Jaime Guerrero Martino, Daniela Sonteno, Rosa Maria Garcia Perez, Domingo Jose Garcia, Francisco Javier Cruz Polo, Santiago Contalt Carrero, and the president of the Association of the Elders of Telefónica Spain in representation of Eduardo Izquierdo Pacheco, Luis Dominguez Jimenez, Marta Gomez Arias, Elvira Gar Garcia, Felix Agustin, Jose Manuel, Miguel, Cristina Gallego have decided to intervene in this meeting. Now, the request for information mentioned from the shareholders deal with the following issues. The share price, the sustainability of the dividend, the business in Latin America, the agreement reached with Liberty for the integration of telecom businesses in the UK, recent operation of the Tel of Sours by Telefonica Germany, and the management of Telefonica in COVID-19. As indicated earlier, I'm going to give the floor to the chairman now to respond in a joint fashion to those requests for information. All of this, without prejudice, for that all of them will be answered in writing within the seven days following this meeting. I'm going to now answer the questions having to do with this, uh, this meeting, and I'll try to respond to your questions by grouping them by subject matter. First of all, in terms of the share price, I should point out that the share price, we have two types of factors that affect that. Some have to do with the uh, status of the company. Others have to do with the context of our uh, activity. For example, doubts on growth of revenues in our sector, in our sector, the regulatory uh, issues, uh, foreign currencies, indebtedness for uh, future investment, and extraordinary situations like the one we are under uh, experiencing with COVID-19 affecting all of our lives. And this is also reflected in the fall of all stock markets. Our obligation is to manage this uh, within the context, but controlling our direction, and we've been doing that. We have a clear project, and with our sights set on the objectives that we have, some ideas to share with you in terms of the company strategy. Our sector is crucial for technological development and so that all of its benefits reach society. And this, more than ever, has has been very apparent in with COVID-19. Our future will depend on our capacity to build uh, cutting edge networks with fiber, 4G, 5G, it will also depend on our ability with to use this connectivity to provide advanced digital services to be able to continue to grow and to be able to add artificial intelligence to these new networks to generate new revenues and improve efficiencies. This was uh, the strategy that we developed and that we are continuing. 
with. At this crossroads, we have two decisions to not do anything and wait to see what happens. Or we can actively try to transform the company to be able to capture those opportunities. And we opted for growth. We decided to invest, and we've done that in a very decided fashion. We transformed our networks, and we're doing that in a very particular way. We decided to transform the, com the company commercially from voice to data, developing services like video, machine to machine, cloud, cybersecurity. We are doing that. We decided to be more demanding with the profitability of our capital, our return on capital, and we're doing that. Now, the result of those decisions and that strategy in Telefonica is that we are convinced that today the company is stronger than it was five years ago. We have more advanced techno technological networks, 4G, 5G, fiber. We're pioneers in virtualization. We're pioneers in digitization, in artificial intelligence. We have the highest value fiber customers, 4G Postpaid customers, 65% of our revenues of the company come from broadband and digital services. We have margins and cash flow generation, which are a benchmark in the sector. And I'm going to try to give you a very specific example about that. Five years ago, we wanted to increase our investment to for fiber and roll it out in a massive way in Spain, or to have a lower profile and wait to see what happens with the competition. Well, thanks to the decision, the active decision that we took five years ago today, we are the leaders in fiber in all of Europe. We have a situation that uh, is the envy of our competitors, and we've, uh, we, and we've left behind that peak of investment that our in, uh, competitors are now uh, facing. Now we have to take new decisions. We could persevere in the same plan to strengthen the company, or we could have taken decisions to bring the share price up over the short term, although they, they, they would put in, uh, they would jeopardize our long-term growth. We, we announced a five-point plan uh, just recently to accelerate the strategy that we've already established, and we're executing that plan. We're convinced, and we've been able to take strong steps forward in the middle of this pandemic. <coughs> our, objective is not a three-month plan. We have, this is a company, nearly a hundred-year company, we have the obligation to think over the long term to give, provide return on investment. So we're not going to take these short-term uh, sh short uh, decisions that could weaken the company structurally as we face the future. Now we're looking to the future and this is the health of our company. And and we will continue to achieve our objectives. Our objective is to build a new telephonic that's prepared for the next 100 years. And as a result of this, sooner or later, this will be reflected in the share price. In terms of the sustainability of div the dividend, I want to point out the trust and flexibility of our business model. In the current context where uncertainty predominates, we have a sound position of of um, liquidity and uh, which is uh, allows us to be re more resistant than others and we can give 0 0.4 cents per share which is a very appealing and we are putting to the vote the second tranche of 0 0.2 euros to be paid as from the 16th of june 2020 and the second tranche 0 0.2 euros for December of this year will be done through the flexible voluntary or voluntary script dividend and the second tranche of 2020 0.2 euros will be paid in June of 2021 and the payment means will be decided at the time and for this purpose the adoption of the resolutions <coughs> will be agreed on. In the context of COVID-19, we thought it was a good idea to include this flexible dividend because it gives more flexibility to our financial position and more options to our shareholders. The dividend is comfortably covered by the free cash flow and is aligned with the deliver deleveraging strategy of the company and our commitment to keep an investment grade credit rating. In that respect, I would like to remind you that in the last few years, we have reduced 
our debt by a great deal, by more than 15 billion euros since June of 2016 until March 2020. In addition, we continue to analyze inorganic measures that will be executed as long as we are um, <clears throat> convinced that it generates value for the company. I'd like to underline the strong liquidity position that Telefonica has, and we have the maturity dates covered for more than two years. We have a cash position of more than 8 billion and syndicated loans of a great deal of money, and most of it long term. And the average lifetime is 10.7 uh, years, and its average cost of 10.3%, and more than two thirds of our debt is at fixed rates, which limits exposure to possible increases. We have a, the most sound financial position in the last 13 years, and we haven't announced a re long term remuneration plan, only a plan up until 2020, because we prefer to be cautious and continue with our debt reduction and our firm commitment to a sound financial policy. And in Telefonica Hispam, as we have been pointing out since November, the main objective of the management team in HISBAM is to analyze all the alternatives in order to improve returns in the region. We want to provide our customers with the best possible service, and so we have to be as efficient as possible. But we need to improve our returns in the region. We need to change the way we operate and find ways to strengthen our operations in Latin America. And for this purpose, all options are on the table. And we continue to work on the operating side of things with the spin-off. In the first quarter of the year, we have carried out some movements using the Hispan vehicle and Colombia and Peru using other business models. And we are also preparing ourselves for a possible financial spin-off measuring uh, or analyzing different inorganic positions. We are working fast remotely in this new Telefonica that we announced last November. Fourthly, in terms of the agreement reached with Liberty for the integration of our business in the UK, I want to underline the fact that the merger between O2 and Virgin Media is the biggest consolidation transaction in the telecommunications sector in the uh, last year. And it will crystallize the value very significantly through the generation of synergies, which are hugely significant. It is a transaction which has a positive impact on the generation of cash in Telefonica right from year one immediately, because in closing the transaction will get 5.7 million euros, of a billion, or not euros, pounds rather, uh, in cash for this agreement. And it allows us to strengthen our financial position, our liquidity, and to improve the credit rating of Telefonica. So it's a value creation which we consider to be very positive. But in addition, we believe that this new company is great news, very good news indeed. We have the best converging offering in order to provide support to the economy, consumers, companies and society at a time when the demand for connectivity is critical. This will allow us to offer a value proposition which is converging under two premium brands, O2 and Virgin Media, which will be unbeatable and will create a difference in the residential sector, and we believe too in the company sector, and an attractive offering in the wholesale market. At the same time, it provides the market with a benchmark in the UK which is superior to the sum of the different parts. The combination will mean that the business model will be more sustainable and sound. And we will have a higher scale in the second most important market in Europe. And we are creating the champion in connectivity in the UK, a market where the size of opportunity is huge because the penetration of broadband and ultra-fast brand, uh, ultra broadband is much higher than the average. And this combination creates synergies of more than £6 billion, synergies with a degree of certainty in the execution because almost 80% of synergies that have been identified are in costs and investment. And in addition, they're conservative because they don't include any synergies from the financial or tax point of view. In addition, both um, Liberty and Telefonica have experience in the integration of these transactions, surpassing in many cases the synergy objectives that we s were set at the beginning of the transaction. And this allows for the capacity for generating cash in the UK can improve very significantly. 
to summarise, with this transaction we're strengthening our presence in one of our four key markets. We crystallise important synergies, we improve the cash position immediately and we create value for Telefonica shareholders. And we're opening up a whole new world of opportunities for our team and for society as a whole in the UK. Fifth, as for the sale of towers in Telefonica, Germany, Three days ago, we took a further step forward in the strategy we announced in September 2009 to monetize our mobile telecommunications sites to crystallize the value of these sites for shareholders, improving our return on capital employed and to make a better use of our infrastructures. In this transaction, Telefonica Germany sold about 10,100 sites to Telsius for an amount of 1.5 billion euros, which is a multiple of approximately 23 times enterprise value EBITDA. And this transaction, in addition, once the authority, uh, the competition authorities approve it, will allow for a reduction of debt of about 500 million uh, euros for the Telefonica Group between 2020 and 2021, thanks to the contribution made by the partners in Telsius and once the tax effects have been discounted. And this is part of our meeting of the strategy we announced last November. At the same time, with this transaction, we're strengthening Telsius. And Telsius goes from consolidating itself as one of the main neutral uh, operators in Europe because it multiplies its size, reaching 30,400 sites. And this agreement, in addition, covers the commitment to build new sites many new sites and it will make Telsius multiply by six its current portfolio in Germany up to 15,000 sites of its own. This transaction ensures a strong future growth in the biggest market in Europe and strengthens the presence of Telsius in the country. In addition, I would like to outline the fact that uh, the transaction has come about uh, by, uh, has been carried out by our teams under lockdown. It strengthens infra uh, portfolio in uh, infrastructures and vehicles, which has 50.01% of Telsius as the main and as closed transactions for acquisition of towers in Brazil and in Peru. Telefonica Infra is one of the five, ma five main axes of the strategy that was announced last November. And finally, as for the management of Telefonica before faced with COVID-19, I would like to thank the Woods for Mr. González Carrero and to point out that for us in Telefonica, it makes us very proud to have his active participation and collaboration because if Telefonica has known how to respond uh, during the COVID-19 crisis as it has done and not just by giving a great connectivity service and making clear how relevant the investments have been in the last few years, it has to do too with the values of this company which is the result of its history and uh, your association is essential for this because if we have the values we have, it's because of the legacy we inherited. And at a time of the COVID-19, you have helped us to maintain those values that Telefonica has forged over so many years. So we're very grateful for your participation in all of these initiatives through voluntary work, but also through your permanent contact with us. If Telefonica is what it is today, if we are what we are and have the values that we have, it is thanks to the contribution and the legacy that our elders have left to us. So I'll never be able to um, express how grateful I am for all of this. Now the Secretary will inform on the voting process. The Secretary must now report on the voting on the proposal submitted to the shareholders for the consideration of this general meeting. I am pleased to inform you that with the votes resulting from the proxies and the distance votes received prior to this meeting, and regardless of the votes in favour, against and abstentions, if any, cast by the shareholders or their representatives attending this meeting in the manner indicated earlier, there is a sufficient majority in each of the items on the agenda to approve all the proposed resolutions submitted by the Board of Directors to the shareholders of this meeting, so that each and every one of the items on the agenda is hereby approved. Without prejudice to the foregoing, the final voting data will be published on the company's corporate website. 
The notary will certify the minutes of this general shareholders meeting, complying with all other customary legal requirements. Those shareholders wishing to read the minutes may, in a few days, request at Telefonica's shareholder office that a photocopy of the notarized minutes of the meeting be delivered or sent to them. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen shareholders. The meeting is adjourned.